Sup guys, it's your boy Justin with this year's X-Men Month finale. Hopefully it's not the last X-Men Month review, but who knows. But even if it is, this, in my opinion, would be the one to end it all. Which is the X-Men The Dark Phoenix Saga, which collects comics from 1979 from 1980. Specifically X-Men 128 through 137. Featuring the talents of Chris Claremont and artist John Byrne and Terry Austin did the inking. So this is the legendary cult classic comic book. Which a lot of people consider to be the the book that probably should have ended the X-Men. Because it's like, they, they never... Like, to a lot of people, they never topped this. And this was... Like, after this, John Byrne, I think, left X-Men after that. <laughs> which... I, I, which he has, uh, John Byrne has an X Men fan comic called X Men Elsewhen, which takes place, which is like a sequel to Dark the Dark Phoenix Saga, right? So, so yeah, the yeah. So the book starts off with uh, our with uh, our characters after the battle with Proteus, you know. Banshee leaves the team and is living with Mario Metagrit, uh, Metagrit. <gasps> and uh, they, they, right, and uh, this is when they introduce the Hellfire Club. You have uh, Jason Wingard is, uh, is like a telepath illusionist who's trying to subvert Phoenix, which is Jean Grey, before she became Dark Phoenix. Right, a lot of white backgrounds. That's like my one problem with this comic book. And the story starts off with our Cerebro detects two new mutants, right? One in Chicago, one in New York, and our X Men go out to recruit them, only to get ambushed by the Hellfire Club that's that hacked their Cerebro. Which, the the this is also the thing where like the X Men were gone for a while, and Scott Summers was the was the leader and there's like tension between the x-men and the xavier because xavier is treating x-men like wolverine like kids man he's like oh tell wolverine to get back in your in your train or he's gonna get 10 demerit points 10 or ten thousand professors that could do fuck all <laughs> god damn it right this is also the we get the first appearance of emma frost as the white queen Right, which, and not just Emma Frost, but K Kitty Pride, and who is the new new mutant in Chicago? Which this was a very funny scene where they take they take um, uh, Kitty Pride, who's thirteen here, uh, to to uh, ice cream shop or something, and this was a very awkward scene. I don't know if you can read that. That was very awkward. And in the background, you see Wolverine looking at a hustler, hustler uh, magazine is looking at is looking at pornos magazines while Colossus is looking behind his shoulder. And you see the 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 clerk is like the shop owner is like that motherfucker. <laughs> so he gets in like Wolverine's case, who's now reading a penthouse. This ain't no library, fell. You want to read the magazine, buy the magazine. Which, I don't know why you're selling porno mags in an ice cream shop, but whatever, man. Oh, so they get attacked by Hellfire mech goons, right? And basically what happens, the t half the team gets ambushed and taken prisoner. And Kitty Bride tags along to rescue them. This is where we get introduced to the Dazzler. This is the first appearance of the Dazzler, which, you know what? Despite her dumb costume, I actually, sorry, her dumb character, I actually like that costume. <laughs> so yeah, they go into a, a shady disco, right? Where they're also going to get attacked, ambushed by the Hellfire Club. There's Sebastian Shaw with his very receding hairline. He looks like Anthony Hopkins in that, right? So yeah, they get ambushed. Like the the main the main vil like half this book, the villain, 
the villains are the Hellfire Club, and then like the second half is basically the Dark Phoenix. But the but the, this the Hellfire Club leads into the Dark Phoenix saga because the because you have this character named Jason Wynn, uh, Wingard or whatever, who was manipulating Dark Phoenix Phoenix, and the professor put like psychic circuit breakers in psychic circuits in Jean Grey's head to help her control the Phoenix Force, which they use to help Leandra, the Shi'ar Empress, get like take over the throne of the Shi'ar Empire from her evil brother, right? So yeah, like lots of fights between the X-Men and the Hellfire Club, which it turns out the Hellfire Club has lots of mutants, right? Also, Angel's on the team. Here you see some of the mutants. You got this guy who can control gravity. Uh, Shaw has basically... If you've seen X-Men First Class, you know his powers. You can hit... He, he gets stronger with, by Connect Force. And you have Donald Pierce, who's a cyborg, right? So we got Angel's back on the team, kind of. So yeah, what ends up happening is that they turned... They turned uh, the... They defeat the X-Men by Jason Wingard mip manipulating Phoenix into thinking that they are long-lost lovers from, like, the ancient past, right? And it turns out by doing that, he fucks up, he, he, this, he undoes Professor Xavier's psychic circuits that allows Jean Grey to control the Dark Fe the Phoenix Force, which turns into the... So the, the Dark Phoenix, right? So yeah, it, there's also a thing where she thinks there she's back in time. So yeah, she thinks Aurora is a you know. I'm not gonna say it, but yeah. So now now we go into the they eventually they they, they defeat the Hellfire Club, which I kind of liked the the fights. The fights were pretty good. And there was lots of strategy. And you actually saw our characters win and lose, you know, lose and win, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, it, tur it turns out that Jason Wingard, spoiler alert, was actually Mastermind. Yeah, it wasn't as handsome as he, you know, made everybody out to think. But it turns out they won, they won one fight only to be fucked over when it turns out, yeah, the Jean Grey turns into the Dark Phoenix. And she destroys the plane. It, the, I love this. Uh, it starts off with the... She destroys the plane. And literally everybody's falling from the sky. Everybody's pretty much fucked. Except for like, you know, Colossus, Storm, and uh, Nightcross. Or like, Storm has to save Wolverine and Cyclops. So you have this battle. Big battle. Right? And uh, Beast at this point in time was working with the Avengers... But, uh, you know, cover, covered for them, right? And, like, yeah, like, Jean, Green, Jean Grey, after defeating the X-Men, went to, uh, went to Shi'ar space and, and basically, Jenna, like, ba basically, she's the new Galactus, where now, but, like, Galactus ate sentient planets, she... Uh, eats suns to fuel her energy, and she ends up actually de accidentally destroying a solar system that had like seven people, uh, s like seven people, seven billion people or something. And that uh, she gets into a battle with a Shi'ar uh, battle cruiser, who ends up being destroyed. And they send this set this stress signal to uh, Leandra, right? So now Leandra wants to destroy the Phoenix. So what? Uh, so for the climax of the book, are the Avengers have to? Sorry, the X Men. Which I'm sorry, the Avengers. They constantly mention the Avengers in this book. The uh, the X Men have to come up with a plan to save to save Jean Grey from the Phoenix, right? Which they do. I'm not going to spoil it, but they do. They come up, up with the device. Uh, and I, there, though there's this kind of lame, like, oh, there's a creepy scene here. I wonder if I, if I could find it. Oh, this was a cool scene where, like, you know, there's a psychic duel between Professor Xavier and, and Dark Phoenix, but yeah, yeah this is a cr 
creepy scene. So after she gets tr transformed back into Jean Grey, her she's naked because she her costume. She was using her TK powers to transform her clothes, her normal clothes, into her costume. So when she lost her powers, I guess she lost her costume. I don't know, but she's naked and she gets she gets embarrassed when her when her dad brings her some clothes and he's like. Oh dear, I don't believe it. Dad is blushing. Oh my god, that was a creepy scene. <laughs> but yeah, what happens after they finally save Jean Grey from the Dark Phoenix? They get teleported to the Shi'ar Empire, right? Where Jean Grey is about to be executed for gen for just killing a, a sentient planet. But the Professor Xavier pr uh, pr proposes basically a trial by combat. Challenging uh, having a duel between the X Men and the Imperial Guard of the Shi'ar Empire, which they all have their own special powers, right? And randomly during the duel, these two um, get involved, which they're representatives of the Kree and Skrull. He's a representative of the Kree Empire, and he's a re representative of the Sk Skrull Empire. And you'll you even have like, um, what's his name? Uh, I forget this guy's name. The Supreme Intelligence and you have the Kree, the, the Kree Empress, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you have this death match battle where Jean Grey dons her Marvel Girl outfit where our characters have to fight. The X-Men have to fight random the Imperial Guard. Where, right? And the Watcher is watching everything. The Watcher has cameos, right? See, I'm not gonna say how the how the book ends because I don't want to spoil it. Because I want you got you guys should read this book for its for yourself. Which I forgot to mention, it goes for thirty U.S. forty Canadian. I, I was a little eh, when I saw it was forty bucks. I'm like eh, but then it's like eight issues, and the last issue is like a is like thirty five pages. So it's like a almost it's almost thirty five pages is not technically a double size issue, but you know that is a good bang for your buck. So I'm just gonna go with my likes and dislikes for the book. The art art's good, the writing's good, though it's a little dated. You know, it's still good. The writing's still good. The dialogue's good. Very, pretty much everybody talks like they did they do in the '90s X Men cartoon. Which was the 90s X Men cartoon was inspired by the Chris Claremont John Byrne run, right? And lots of and like it's not like our characters are winning winning every fight. They the the they they, 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 they uh, you actually see our superhero characters struggle, and there's like a fight in almost every issue, right? Which is good. And the climax was very good. I wasn't expecting the climax to take place. On an alien homeworld where our characters have to battle a team of super, a, a team of uh, alien superheroes, only for something to fucking go wrong, which I'm not gonna spoil, right? But yeah, uh, this was a great book, and I highly recommend it. Nine out of ten. It, you, if you're an X Men fan, you have to read this book. Uh, for hopefully, though, it would have been nice if. Like Marvel would put out the on the, the would have collected would collect these run, these classic runs in omnibuses and keep them in fucking print, but you know, because uh, I would recommend doing that instead of this. But you know what? If if you know they don't do that, so read this book, man. If you're X Men fan, it, it's a it's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. Right, and it's a fitting end for this, for what could be the last X Men month. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if we're still around next year. <laughs> right on YouTube. I'm gonna. Ho hopefully, I'm still alive next year. I'm just. I don't know if I'm gonna still be on the YouTube or the internet because uh, you know Canada's like passing some uh, very interesting internet laws. <laughs> Oh my god. So yeah. I was supposed to I was supposed to do a review f for Canada's Day, but it turns I didn't I should have checked out the page count on the book I bought. It's almost 300 pages, so there's no way I'm going to be able to finish that book in time for tomorrow, especially since I have a Canada's Day 
barbecue party I have to go to. Uh, so I'm not gonna have time. I, I should have bought. I I should have bought a single issue, but you know, it, uh, I I. I I I didn't look closely enough at the back of the book I was reading, right? But uh, but we'll we'll review that book at some point. But uh, so but our next comic book review is going to be for Independence Day, and we're going to review Captain America: America First, which has like three I think it has like three uh, stories in here: Captain America: Theater of War One Shot, Operation Zero Point. And uh, prisoners of duty and America first. So like it's like four, uh, Mer like Captain America one shots. So I look forward to that review, guys. Peace and a like and comment, please.